Sports Network presents the 1995 Bud Light Pro Beach Volleyball League. This weekend, it is Volleyball 4 from the Hilton Hawaiian Village, Honolulu, Hawaii. This is the way it should be. If you planned a vacation, you would come to beautiful Honolulu. And if you plan to watch beach volleyball, you come to Volleyball 4 and the crowning of the men's champions. Hi, everybody. I'm Duffy Wilson. Thank you for joining us. It's the 1995 Bud Light Pro Beach Volleyball League, Volleyball 4. Joining me on the telecast are ESPN volleyball analyst John Lee. John, you couldn't have a better scenario in Honolulu. The number one team and the number two team meet here. Team side out, led by their captain, Jeff Stork, going up against Team Sony Auto Sound, led by their captain, Scott Fortune. It is simply a battle of the best. Sony Auto Sound, since the midpoint in the season, they've got their personnel together, they've got the formula, they've been banging away, and they've been the top team. But all season long, the most consistent performers, Team side out. They've had the formula all along. It's so fitting that they meet here in the final. Let's talk about Team Sony Auto Sound and Team Side Out. First, Sony Auto Sound. It seems that Scott Fortune has gotten it together. Fortune has finally got his entire personnel together. At the midpoint in the season, Craig Buck, of course, the big banger in the middle, six foot nine, doing it all. Fortune himself, recovering from a shoulder injury. He's healthy, and since the midpoint, he's been hammering, but the arrival of big Mike Seeley, the six foot seven inch setter, that's what has turned it around for these guys, and Fortune finally put the entire squad together. They have played so well, but boy, do they have a job today. They're going up against Team Side Out, led by Stork, and led very well. Stork didn't have to do any changes. Since he arrived back from Italy, he's been the big blocking, setting element in the front row. They've had the winning formula with Partee and Hannon, the two twin towers. All season long, they've been leading everybody. They just want to keep it together for one final match. The fans are into it, and so are our players. It's time for Volleyball 4, the final match of 1995. Let's get to the action. It is a gorgeous day in the island, Honolulu, Hawaii. Here we are on Waikiki. The air temperature has dropped under 80 degrees. And John, speaking of jump, look at that sand. Everybody's been skying out of this sand. Two crushed pieces of coral in there. It's powder sugar white, and they really jump out of it. It's a nice, firm surface, easy to get your toes into. Team Sony Auto Sound is captained by the former captain of the U.S. Olympic team, 6'6", Stanford. Cardinal Scott Fortune. Matt Lyles hits on the outside from Long Beach State at 6-3. In the middle, it's Mr. Middle, Craig Buck. Thank you very much. 6-9 out of Pepperdine. And the setter is 6-7 UCLA Bruin Mike Seeley. Team side out is captained by Jeff Storr. Olympic gold medalist 6-3 out of Pepperdine University. Outside, the beach veteran is Roger Clark from UCLA. Four times an NCAA All-American and national champion. Dan Hannon hits in the middle and outside. The Stanford Cardinal is 6'6", and Doug Partee in the middle out of UCLA, Olympic gold medalist, 6'6". Here we go. Roger Clark always starts the service rotation for side out. Zeros. Rally scoring to 15 points. No cap on the score, but a cap almost on Craig Buck. One point goes on the board for Team Sony Auto Sound. It's a best two of three. If we need a third game, it's to seven points. Look out. Matt Lyles will serve. X play, Hannon's block. You got two there. Clark on the outside, Seeley and big Greg Buck shut him down. Sony Auto Sound, Greg Buck, the, the point, blocking two, force for Team Sony Auto Sound. He stuffs that first ball, but it stays in play. He says, I want to finish this job. Ball comes out to Roger Clark, and look at those time-tested instincts of Craig Buck as he goes up, and you see him 
elate after the, afterwards. He stopped all the teams in international volleyball for so many years, won a triple crown, and has won so many times on the beach. Lyles has to toss it over. Side out could get one back here. Net is the call. Seeley in the net, the I believe. Sound. I think it was fortunate out on the left the side the as he went up. Craig Buck decided the ball was too far outside, didn't even go up, leaving Fortune to block all by himself. Yes. And you can see as he penetrated over the net, he hit that outside cable. Jeff Stork serves. Down one point. Nice passing by Lyles, and Craig Buck sees the open court, doesn't need to swing hard that time, just knuckles it over the top. Experience is such a key issue. You're all jacked up for this big finale of the entire 95 season. Still time for composure and poise for Craig Buck. He's been tested. Not a problem. The problem for Jeff Storch that time is that pass was sailing over the net. The wind picked up just a little bit and blew the ball until it was about 50-50. Stork couldn't deal with it. A look at Seeley at the service line and a big lead early for Sony. Four serves one. Good. Hand and outside. Fortune up with a block and a ball well, goes the down. Five Make one. that lead 5-1. John, that's a huge Sony auto sound. Take it. Just sign out. That, that is a real it. big lead got early. Sony to give he goes up and stuff that one. Joel's Scott Guzman. Fortune, James Hartman, captain of Carmen Team Armstrong, Sony Auto Sound. A big match. And Mark? Volleyball 4 is very important because it's, it's very fulfilling. It's been a long summer. I'm with the U.S. national team training for the Olympics in Atlanta. Um, but when we get a chance to come out here on the beach and show our skills, it, it's, it's great. And uh, nothing would be more fulfilling than winning this year of Volleyball 4. There's also the issue of wanting to beat your buddies. Nobody wants to uh, have people over for dinner during the offseason and be reminded how they lost in the final battle. So everybody has some points to settle right here, even though they're all good friends. They are putting it to team side out. We'll put this action back to you on ESPN when we return. Welcome back to Honolulu, Hawaii, and the beautiful, and I do mean that very sincerely, Hilton Hawaiian Village. Thank you very much to our hosts. Let's pick up the action here in game one. What is going on with Team Side Out? They're down 2-8. They're having a little bit of trouble passing the ball up to the net. They need it up there so that they can establish Partee in the middle and then establish Hannon coming through on the X. It just hasn't been happening. Even free balls have not been passing up to the zone where Stork can set. Best two out of three games. I'm wondering if game one is going to be a throwaway. Fortune tosses it up. 8-2 lead. There's the, there is the established middle. That's what they need. That good pass that leads to the very standard, very automatic kill of Doug Partee in the middle. Well, Doug Partee having a tough start here. He doesn't like the fact that everything's on the line in one match. You know, the format has kind of worked against us. If we were the second place team this year, we would love the format. But since we've been the best team all year, we've proven it. We've proven that we can uh, play with a lot of different combinations of players. And so we've taken the overall championship in our eyes, but still it comes down to one match. And then that one match is going to be very important for us. Partee comes through in those big matches, though. You watch, he'll step right up. Three served eight. <laughs> Stepping well, right up the is the big 6'9", Craig, nine, Buck Craig Biggie Buck. Nine, three, the score, you can Craig see Buck just seven. by the look in his eye, he's got three kills so far, and he's going to be getting plenty more, and he's getting a piece of virtually every block. Ageless right. wonder. Up there. Nice deep hit by Roger Clark. Roger Clark in an attempt to keep those Into blockers thinking about all their hitting opportunities and all the different people they have to block. Stork is distributing the ball to Roger Clark on the left side. Sometimes he focuses just on Partee and Hannon. He's spreading it around now. The only kids on the court, really, Seeley and Hannon, they've both played a lot of volleyball, a lot of veterans. These guys have seen a lot of games. Not going to quit. Hannon's been on the winning team the last two years, so veteran is right. Stock reaches down and covers Seeley's block, okay, but Hannon gets the, the kill four, way off the net. Nine. Hannon's approach is just a beautiful thing. When he keeps that ball in front of him, he's just got a picture-perfect arm swing. He's way off the net. Still gets a nice whack at the ball, and Craig Buck can't quite pick it up. Hannon leads the league in kills with 369. Call your police department. He's the most wanted out here. 
Roger Clark serves. X play. Fortune says, you want to see an X? Check this out. Beautiful set by Mike Seeley. And again, when he's got Craig Buck leading the way on that X, the blockers concentrate on him, leaving things open for Scott Fortune's big whip. Okay, John, tell me the truth. How fast does that volleyball travel on that attack? Too fast, Duffy. Stay out of the way. Blocked by Buck. Partee sets Hannon. High hands, nice job by Dan Hannon Dan as he Hannon goes, goes up and net also the calls the kill for the on up. Team Sony Auto Center. There were a lot of big arms up there against Hannon that time. He had Captain Jeff both of the blockers on him. He says, I'm just going to go with a high flat one and try and catch some fingertip. Very nice job. Yeah. Yeah. X play, Clark is there. Big back set Seven from Jeff Stork with that precision Hannah, here. Just toss this thing about 20 Seven, feet behind ten, your back, right <laughs> on Stork. the money. Jeff Stork's hands are so beautiful. He's facing the right side. Everybody thinks he's going to the right. What a bold set. And just in the, right in the wheelhouse of Dan Hannon, who rips it off the single block. No chance for a double block. I'm going to think about it. Today's match is a 20 second timeout has been taken by Team Sony Auto Sound as Side Out has come back. They were down big, 8 2. They have scored five points to two points for Team Sony Auto Sound. John, they can do that. They have such confidence in each other. They know that Jeff Storch is going to come through under pressure isolate them one-on-one -on -one outside, and they're going to be doing the block, and they've got Doug Partee, the big blocker in the middle, and Dan Hannon, his compliment. They're both middle blockers, so they have a real blocking edge over some of these teams. Jeff Stark, captain, playing for the USA volleyball team. First player ever to be named the MVP in the professional league in Italy. First player from the United States, that is. Oh, big time, up goes Fortune Scott Fortune. Clark was there, the couldn't dig yeah, the ball. He just made a, kind of a slow move on that ball. He is looking into the sun. You mentioned the, the uh, sun sinking behind the Sony Auto Sound team right now, and it uh, makes a little bit of a problem. People trying to dig that ball. Seeley serves. Just Oof. Serve long, out of bounds. Eight. Without much Facing wind, people are just Dan trying Hannon. to keep the ball deep, making serves trouble for the passers. And now Hannon will serve his team down by three points in game one. Ooh, and that time, the connection not made. I'm sorry, we got a busy signal on the back line for Buck. He went up strong, took a big swing. He was just a little bit under the ball. The score still players get to sit down and take a break. Nine points now for Team there. Side Out, and Sony Auto Sound has 11. It is Volley Bowl 4. We're playing for all the bragging rights in 1995, and we'll be back to ESPN's Pro Beach Volleyball. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Hilton Hawaiian Village, and thank you for joining us, Sony Auto Sound. Play hard, play loud. Look at that, John. Who's on top? Lowly Ocean Pacific, who had so many early exits during the course of this season, up here in the big crescendo tournament, on top in number one. Sitting in the easy chair, round robin, though, was not too kind to team Paul Mitchell. Paul Mitchell came in here looking for a chance to qualify for the big finale, the volleyball, but they did not win any of the close games and did not like their time here on the islands. Paul Mitchell could have been in volleyball and so could have a team Naya. Pops Tavertla came over here determined to get either second or first in this tournament and make it into volleyball. It didn't happen, ruined his little tropical paradise. Sony with a third place got into volleyball and of course side out was the number one team in the season, number two here in round robin. Side out knew that they were here all along, but they are powered by pride. They knew they were going to be in the volleyball. They came in here and executed all week long, won big games, played fantastic nonetheless. And now Side Out has something to prove. Are they number one, or has Sony come all the way back? That will be decided here in Volleyball 4. Let's get back to the action. At the service line, Dan Hannon. His team down by two points. Oh. Oh, nice block by Hannon. Out of nowhere, a gorgeous Dan set by Hannon Mike Seeley. That back one-handed set, but Hannon read it beautifully. Is up and over the net. Game number one of volleyball for the league championship. Look at the grim determination in that man's face. Match. He's extremely happy. I guess that's his happy look. <laughs> this is my happy look. Beautiful place. 
Closer game now, one point deficit. Can they dig that ball? Kaboom, no, Matt can they Lyles protect themselves? Into the Matt Lyles alone oh, out Rush there, no the block at all. Lyles says, I think I'll just try the straight yeah, down rep. Boy, Scott, We're I fine. tell you what, Jeff Stork was in the sand digging in, and Lyles hammered him. 12 10 service from Team Sony Auto Sound. Game one. Hannon, nice approach, a nice Hannon's line shot line. from Dan Hannon. Hannon. And again, the gorgeous set from Jeff Stork. He had Doug Craig Buck frozen in the middle, thinking that the ball might go to Doug Partee. Hannon reaps the benefit of that. One of the reasons he has so many kills is he does get to play with such a great setter. I like, I like. Again, Lyles outside. Crushing on the line. Mm. The a new pony to ride. Let's try a new source of strength. Matt Lyles stepping up. Big three, hit. Three kills for Matt now. 13 serves 11. Ooh. Hannon, bad pass, but a nice set from Stork. Ball spiked out of bounds. However, Sony Auto Sound call. got into the net. John Martin, the net under call official, calls a net on referee. Greg Buck. Side out, four side out. Not there to stop the momentum of this man, Dan Hannon. Buck looks over at the referee as Hannon settles in. Big blockers going up a little out of position. And yes, I saw a forearm penetration by Scott Fortune. Side outs down by one. Here comes Clark, the ace server on the tour. Nice Not pass, that Fortune. Great swing. Team captain Scott Fortune opposing that big twin tower block. Cranks it cross court and Stork couldn't pick it up. Now, note that, uh, that uh, Jeff Stork did miss a couple of games earlier in the tournament because of a sore back. Been nursing a bad back and made kind of a weak move on that dig. Game point in the air. Game one. Go, 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 go. Clark gets a try at it, but game one goes to the front line and the flawless execution of Team Sony Auto Sound. 15 12. The beauty of having a six foot, seven inch big blocking setter is Mike Seeley is up and over the net. We are back teaming up with a middle blocker. Look at that block. No place to go for, for Roger Clark on the left side. A big block on the outside from Team Sony Auto Sound, and they stop Team Side Out in game one. It's best two of three, and we'll be back for game two at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. Stay with us on ESPN. The sparkling waters of Honolulu Bay here, Waikiki, our beach, and the Hilton Hawaiian Village, our host. John Lee and Duffy Wilson. And right now, John, it looks like we could also say that Team Sony Auto Sound looking like royalty in Hawaii. Well, they have had so much momentum going into this tournament. They're all very resigned and resolved. They want to get out there and do it right now. Craig Buck is really lighting it up. Scott Fortune says, no tomorrow, let's do it now. I listen to the whistle blow as we are ready for play. Will team side out be ready? We'll see right now as we go into game number two. It can be a three-game match. Our tiebreaker go. goes to seven points if we need one. Out, needing a win we will here. need one, John, so if side out can three, sort out the marbles. blocking all that is going at the them. The it really comes down to passing. And I mentioned that Stork has had a weak back. Now, he's got a neoprene back brace underneath his tank top, does Jeff Stork. So uh, he's playing with a little bit of stiffness, if not outright pain. Lyle starts things off. Zeros. Rally scoring. 15 points. No cap and no crummy time clock. Fight, 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 fight. Watch. Go ahead. Watch. Up stand. Up stand. Do it. No. Hannon angling. Ball spiked out of bounds. Boy, John, a here from Mr. Consistency. And note that time that Craig Buck was blocking right side. They know that ball's going to Hannon there. They're kill leader so buck is out there stationed on, on dan hannon to stop him that's his assignment and mike seeley was blocking middle point number one goes on the board for sony in game two one serve zero stork has to go on two as the pass was up too tight he does it effectively the kill for side out the point so great to be left-handed when you're setter and that ball is close stork steals a glance over his right shoulder and says i see a way to get this ball down i don't have to set anybody Goes up with both hands. Blocker's up there with him, but he's up high enough. 
and right in front of the diving Nat Lyle. It's great to be left-handed when you're a pitcher. It's good to be a bowler left-handed because you have a better lane, better track on the lane. Oh. Tied at one. Oh, no. Nice look. He just went up. Line down hmm. Let me Dylan see. How about over there? Jump up about three, four inches. Cover in the air. Scan the uh, opposing <laughs> sands and then right to the correct and spot. And he did. You could actually see him go, yeah, there's nobody there. Think. Boo. Double whistle. Seeley will toss it up again. The Mikasa Beach chant. Heads over. Trouble again. Parti going up that real high, Partee getting a nice little uh, paintbrush or whatever. Or Everybody's out. going up with a gun loaded and then just getting away with some soft stuff. So there's a lot of uh, nice high knuckles finding the home. We're tied at twos. Nice pass, Lyles. Buck just aims the finesse game, says I'm going to crack it back. Nice cutback by Craig Buck. I did hear Jeff Stork kind of groan on that service. He didn't hit the ball that hard. It wasn't a jump serve. I'm wondering how Jeff is doing. Craig Buck, he by the way, is doing just fine. Stork told me he's not in any pain at all. Jump serve, exactly the side out, out. side out. Easy point, three, three. 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 Stanford's Dan Hannon to serve. We're tied at threes. Hannon serving into the sun and off the wind. Four, four. No! And that time, Fortune goes Bang outside, no, no hands, a lead for team side out. And John, it's so important for them to establish themselves early in this game, too. Exactly. They have a lot of confidence going. Going into this tournament, they need to show people that they can get it done. Here's the set. Now, we've got Craig Buck going up in the middle, so here's his man, Parti. Look at the intensity. But the back set is going to come right behind here to Scott Fortune. Dan Hannon is going to break out there to block, and Fortune tries to go down the line, tries to beat him to the outside. It does not happen. Fortune hits it a little too wide, but look at that stack blocking technique by Team Side Out to try and stop the X of Sony Autosound. Roger Clark with a great dig. And, and the block oh. goes up, and the ball goes, goes off of Doug the attacker, Parti. Matt Lyles. He got a 5-3 lead for side out. Lyles got stuffed so badly, he pointed and said, look, it went out of bounds, but it really hit him first. The block just stuffed the ball straight back into his attacking hand, went off his knee, and out of bounds. Lyles looking for service from Hannon. No doubt willing the players are to assist Bobby Clark, the ref, oh, well, in making like these calls. You're in, you're in. You got one there. Clark showing Jeff Stork no right mercy, sets him outside, he says, I'm sorry. Out of sound, another point. And Ooh. Stork stares at the sand and grimaces. That a mistake, I believe, by Roger Clark. I doubt that Jeff Stork will get many transition ball offsets, right? Don't think that's going to happen. Doug Partee is blocked, but a net is called on Team Sony Auto Sound. The side out dodges a bullet. I think Scott Fortune, as he stepped in there to try and assist on this, look at this aggressive blocking, though. We've got all three people up and penetrating over the net. A very slight net call. There's Partee assisting the officials again. ESPN and all of our sponsors are so proud to bring you Volleyball 4, and we are also proud of the 100th year of volleyball, the Volleyball Centennial. The game we know today as volleyball is celebrating its centennial birthday. That's 100 years of serve, set, blocks, kills, digs, and aces. The sport that was once known as Mintonet has come a long way. Volleyball was invented by William Morgan in 1895 at the Holyoke, Massachusetts YMCA. And the game's the stepchild of basketball and was invented in search of an activity for those who found basketball too strenuous. Between 1910 and 1914, the sport was taught by YMCA directors in Latin America and China, Japan, and the Philippines. The U.S. Army finally decided that World War I troops should be exercising when they're not fighting. And between 1918 and 1919, it's estimated that over one and a half million servicemen played and taught overseas allies the sport. The six-person indoor version of volleyball became an Olympic sport finally in 1964. 
About the same time, beach volleyball players took the game outdoors. Since then, the popularity of beach volleyball has risen to the point where the two-person version is now a medal sport at the Centennial Olympic Games next year in Atlanta. Happy 100th birthday to volleyball and all volleyball players worldwide. All these years and all these lives that volleyball has touched, I'm really glad it's touched mine. And John, it seems like with your stories, you must have played 80 of those 100 years. We'll be back to Honolulu and ESPN's Pro Beach Volleyball right after this. Welcome back to the Hilton Hawaiian Village, Honolulu, Hawaii. Sony Auto Sound bringing along a lot of money. Let's take a look, John, at our league standings as we come to the conclusion of 1995. And there's side out way up on top due to their consistency. They've been all over it all season long. Service. 6-4 the lead. Party Sky Balls. Oh, Fortune roll shot, but oh, it goes out. Roger Clark, I was saying, go, Roger. Great judgment by Roger Clark. He was all over that little spin dink and had the vision to let it land just wide of the tape. Should have known. Should have known that a player like Clark knew what was going down. He's not going to waste any energy out there. A 7-4 lead for side out. Big game two. That's deep and gone. 30 feet long is the court, 30 feet wide on each side. That was about 40 feet of air ball. Partee wants to send that thing up so he can get to the net, but uh, it's not a great sky ball. He just needs to get it in. Good, 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 good. Everybody's trying to keep that ball deep. Yeah, one there. Partee going up against Craig Buck. Partee wins Partee that battle that time. Team side, huh? It's tough getting Roger the ball Clark over Craig Buck. Up. Partee just Currently showed middle and had it underneath his hands. 8-5 for team side out. And Seeley, nice pass going on to. Now, Seeley is not left-handed. He's had to work long and hard to develop that left-handed hitting capability. You can see how valuable that time spent is as he goes up after this ball. Is he going to set it? He really takes that block off guard. Six eight uh, serve. Make that nine six and now. Cannon cracking the whip on the X play, and that's the classic X play. Yes, it is, John. That everybody else aspires to. Jeff Stork pulling the trigger. Dan Hannon detonating. Craig Buck going up, nice little one set from Mike Seeley, point number seven for Team Sony Auto Sound. Craig Buck is not ready to get back to the indoor game. Well, it's tough inside the gym on that hardwood. Craig likes it much better out here on the sand. He'll be on his way to Japan. He's halfway there now. He'll be playing in Japan again this winter. The attack from Doug Partee. Out of bounds, point. Doug Clark T with a spank of the kill. Side out has Dan 10 Hannon points. 15 point points advantage, 10 is a seven. win in game number two, but you must win by two. Hannon will serve 10-7. Fortune on the X play. Stork chases it down. Set goes to Hannon, and the millie goes high. Hand yeah, smart hey, play the by the Stanford. Of course, he's from Stanford. The the computer smart programmer, side. very smart, Dan Hannon. Program programming computers is one thing, but going up high and strong in the face of that block, that takes a lot of self-control, and it has it in spades. Well, John, what a turnaround. In game number one, we saw dominance by Team Sony Autosound. I'm not going to say we see dominance here, but certainly on the scoreboard, side out with the lead. We'll be back to Honolulu, Hawaii, Volleyball 4, the last match of 95. Don't miss it. The Hilton Hawaiian Village in Honolulu on the shores of Waikiki. And game number two. A lead for team side out. A must win game two. Seeley has to go after that ball. Clark is there. Stork goes deep, but too deep. And again, Roger Clark says, keep that ball away from Jeff. Let him set it. 
Got to keep that ball off the middle. Eight, 11, That's four, a transition Biggie, point Buck opportunity, and they want Dan Hannon or Doug Partee swinging at that ball. A gaff. Might it hurt them? Need this win. Buck serves. Nice floater. Hannon with a pass. And Partee with the attack. Reaches back. Nice. That ball was set a little bit behind him. It was not the perfect Jeff Stork set we're used to seeing. Partee just froze his arm and went to the deep corner. Well placed. 12-8 is the score. Side out has the lead. We've got a break in the action. But our John Lee never has a break in any action. Let's uh, go along with John. A day in the life at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. with the Mikasa behind the Duffy, line. It's a lot of work being that busy. <laughs> Looks like it's kind of expensive too, John. Back to center court we go. 12-8, the lead for side out. They're down one game to zero. Crank it up. Matt Lyle, Matt Lyle crank it down. The big bang, the side out. Jeff Stork is... Nine, Not going up to block at all, so basically it is Dan Hannon and Doug Partee against a three-man attack. Not enough that time as Seeley found the open man, Matt Lyles. Lyles coming back from shoulder surgery. Roger Clark has to chase down a short serve and ace into the sand by Lyles. Roger Clark, the leader in aces, taking a little bit of his own medicine. There's a little bit of wind blowing toward Lyle, so he's got that advantage. He's always got the sun at his back, and that's very nice right now. 10-12 was the serve. Hannon on the X play. X -play Makes that 13 bang. points for team Hannon, side out. Hannon, Rally scoring, and, and only 10 13, for Sony. 13-10 the score. Roger Clark, the server. That's just a thing of beauty. Off that perfect pass, we've got Doug Partee. Look at those big arms. You teach kids to do that. He's going to be going up here in the middle. The middle blocker has to go up with him. And coming from behind, Dan Hannon coming across. Going to outmaneuver that block and rip it. Just a beautiful classic X play concluded by Dan Hannon's Thunder. Thirteen ten oh, serve. serve to the team. The easy side out of play. Yeah. Mike Seeley back to serve it up. Roger's they don't have any points to play with here. Two. When Roger gets aced, you know, he gets uh, a little bit more aggressive on his serves. He's not on the good side, though. He doesn't want to try that now. Just let his block do the work. 11-13 from Seeley. Back set to Dan Hannah, and he'll put the ball away. Side out for the point. Game point opportunity for side out. And now we go to game point Jeff in Stork game two. Team side out can tie it up here one points. game apiece. 
their captain at the service line, Olympic gold medalist Jeff Storr. Craig Block sees nobody home. Raises the high, soft hammer. Nice job. And look at the determination in his face. Captain Scott. It's up high. He sees the court. One blocker on him is right over the top of the block. That's the spot. And we stay at game point. Fortune serves. Miles diving to get to that ball. Just hand and hand and hand and every time. Stork knows where his bread is buttered. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going into Jeff Stork and Dan Hannon combined for point number 15, and we are tied one game apiece. Team Side Out and Team Sony tied it up, and it all comes down to a seven-point tiebreaker. They're not leaving, and you should also not leave. We'll be back. No, they have not left the beach in Honolulu as the sun sinks low. We do not lose any of the enthusiasm of our fans. John Lee and Duffy Wilson. John, one punch, one punch. Everybody's got one. What's going to happen in this tiebreaker? Whack me. I whack you. Somebody wants to get in the last shot. we got a bunch of big bangers out there. They all want to lower that final blow. Let's see who's going to do it. A seven-point tiebreaker now comes up. On the court, Matt Lyles with the service. Rally scoring. No cap on that seven-point score, but you must win by two. Clark does not get away with that tape. Oh, Matt Lyles with a very clutch put away off of the wobbly set, wobbly back set from Craig Buck. Lyles just cuts it down the line and good. Team Sony Auto Sound gets the first point of our tiebreaker. They've been having so much success setting Carty and Hannon. Why set Roger Clark? Stork is back. Dealing to Hannon, but he's dead. Fortune outside. The off ball goes into the net, but a nice attempt by Scott Fortune. We're tied at one, but the advantage right now is Team Sony Auto Sound. And the visibility on that good side seems to be an advantage. People are having a lot of trouble gauging the ball on the side outside. Both teams want this match more than any they've played this year. Go, go. Buck goes up high. Stork is there. Clark looked at Stork for the set and went the other Four way. Contacts. Four contacts. Side, Hannon's side, attack did so not clear the net. Possession for the point two, facing one. Hannon a little bit underneath the ball. Tried to just cut it in. Didn't go. Seeley at the service line. The big setter. For Team Sony Auto Sound, 2-1 lead. Certainly an advantage trouble, early trouble, trouble, trouble. in the tiebreaker. And a nice X play. Nice Boy, did Jeff Stork go up and down, save down, that pass. He dug deep. Not this only did he get the ball hittable, it was just a sweet set. For the making the X game. work. Right here, run now. Look at him reach back with a bad back. That is an extremely tough ball. And look, only one late arriving blocker to get there. No one thought he could make that play. He did. Craig Buck. Stork serves. Tied at two. Somebody's got to turn it around, but that block goes outside. A 3-2 lead, and we trade sides under the net. It's like it's like one of those wrestling matches, you know. We're in the cage. You do not leave the court until this is decided. And what a fitting end to 1995. We've seen all of our teams play so well, but especially these two. Marti is blocked, and suddenly Team Sony Auto Sound is making a move. They lead 4-2. Shades of game one as Craig Buck is reborn in his blocking role. Goes up there against Parti. Up high and strong and over the net. There's the point. Fortune will serve now. Four serving two. And a tight pass makes for a go on two for Jeff Stork. He gets the kill. Nice high knuckle. What poise, composure, such accurate execution by Stork. Playing through tremendous pain. That's all we can say. He will not talk about it, but you can just hear him groan and watch him grimace as he plays. 
Lyles outside the block goes up, side out, needed a block, and Doug Partey gave it to them. Or should I say he gave it to Matt Lyles. Stork was out there with him, and Stork, an excellent blocker, not the size of Sealy, but his blocking technique is excellent. When Lyles is out there against the double block, it's trouble. We're tied at fours. And Craig Buck, Boy, did Craig Buck get away with it there. The Stork was in position to dig that ball. Buck just hit it nice and deep. Instead of a straight down ball, Buck let it tail a little bit to the deep corner. Very nice. Come on, man. Marty Lyles is there. Place knuckle goes down. Picking up the big point off of serve. A huge play. Players gonna switch. The drama the just multiplies. Finally, Buck says over to the coffin corner. There it is. Six four on Up the board. They go and we down goes the ball. Right we trade sides and we move championship. to championship point. Craig League the league championship point. Championship. This is their right World Six Series. Five. Craig, Craig Buck will serve. And he's a great float server. He's got the advantage of the sun at his back. They're going to be looking into the solar eclipse, but the ball never clears the net. Oh, my. And a point, five, six for Doug Partey. The crucial point, we are still at championship point. Team side out must convert here to go to overtime in overtime. That's good. Matt Lyles, that's it, Matt Lyles comes through, Buck decoys the block, Every Lyles up there on the with a lot of heat, a the drive, the nail in the coffin, Matt Lyles wins his first tournament championship, excuse me, I should say, his first league championship with that kill, Team Sony Auto Sound stops, Team Side Out 7-5 in the tiebreaker from Honolulu, Hawaii, what a match by Craig there's Scott Fortune, the man that put it all together. A real relief to get out of that game. Side out started putting their game together, and he knew who would jump out and take the momentum in game three. Turned out to be all Craig Buck and Sony Autosound. Congratulations, and a thirst quencher for Craig Buck. We'll be back to talk things over right after this. Welcome back to the beautiful Hilton Hawaiian Village and Volleyball 4. A big win for Team Sony Auto Sound. They have been coming on, and they came on very strong here. John Lee is courtside with their captain, Scott Fortune, and Craig Buck. I'm here with a couple of guys that ended the season exactly like they wanted to. Scott, a little shaky at the start, but you cleaned the season up, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Um, not my intentions, but it's a long year, um, and I knew I picked this big fellow, Craig Buck, for a reason with fast scoring. We're going to have to block a lot of balls to win, and uh, that was evident in the finals, and I'll take it. Volleyball 4, Sony's the winner. Uh, hats off the side out. They had a very consistent year, but, hey, we won it. It's a very sweet win, and you're right about blocking balls. Game 1 belonged to Craig Buck. What were you doing in Game 1? Anything diff different, or are you just uh, feeling real good? Just uh, got on a good roll at the start, you know, playing loud. It was a nice big crowd, and uh, that always helps my game, you know. I, I like playing in front of a lot of people, so got rolling. Early. You sure did, and Scott did too. Start, Scott coming through on the X, lowering the boom, and really taking the wind out of their sails in game three. Nice job. That's not easy to do against a team like Side Out, so congratulations, you guys. A great championship. Back to you, Duff. An understatement from John Lee. Nice job. I think it was a great job by Sony, Sony Auto Sound. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Honolulu, Hawaii, the Hilton Hawaiian Village. Our hosts, John Lee and Duffy Wilson. And John, congratulations to Team Sony Auto Sound. A big win here in Volleyball 4. Well, you've got to really admire them because they started the season slowly, but they never lost heart. And once they got their personnel intact, 
lights were out and they were blocking balls just like they did here in the finals. Buck, Fortune, Seely, what a wall. Talking about heart. Jeff Stork. He was in tremendous pain. He has led that team to the number one standing in the league. They get beat here, but still a great job by team side out and Jeff Stork. Well, throughout the whole course of the season, they have been the team to beat week in and week out. Everybody's measured their success and often modified the formula for their personnel according to team side out. So they really have had a big impact on this league. That's a great point, John. It would be so fitting right now at the end of the season for us to name the most valuable player and also our all-league selections, John. Dan Hannon on the right side. He's also a middle blocker, but boy, what a hammer on the right he's been all year long from team side out. Kind of a surprise with Matt Lyles there, but hey, he put that last ball away. Matt Lyles on the left side because he passes, he digs, and since his arrival, he's provided the backbone of that Sony Auto Sound offense. And how about the comeback of Doug Partee? A Partee last year, a little unhappy, not quite as effective this year. A huge hammer blocking, hitting like crazy. And Dan Greenbaum, the left-handed sensation, the man who loves volleyball he loves life itself a great setter all year long for team paul mitchell yeah he set our spirit so high the mvp was doug party my mvp was john lee thank you very much to john lee it's been a great 1995 it's been a pleasure working with you john Nothing you know i mean that for john lee and duffy wilson and everybody else at espn we'll see you next year at the beach